welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is the second Tony Makeovers video that I am doing. And uh, we are doing the Goth family. And I honestly have a lot to talk about with this family. The Goth family has been around for a very long time and has a lot of lore. We'll be going over their history, um, their makeovers, and just other stuff. Um, I wasn't sure if I should actually work on their old looks or their new looks because they got an updated look, but the new one has the accurate skin tones compared to the old games and I don't have a preference other than that, so I just use the new ones and, you know, they're the current ones, so I'm just gonna jump right into the goth history because there's a lot to talk about. The goths have a deep history in The Sims and the Sim games are honestly so complicated with the different lore for each game, each version. Like the Nintendo and console games have different lore and it's very confusing. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to move past lore from console games and Nintendo games because it's genuinely going to make my brain explode. I spent so much time researching this family, it was probably kind of overkill, but um, that being said, I am not an expert on Sims lore at all. I'm learning over here. I just did a bunch of research, but like that does not mean I get everything right. So I hope I didn't get anything wrong. If I do, you can just kindly let me know. Uh, so let's get into it. In the original Sims game, there were actually two goth households. The first was Adult Bella and Mortimer, or Young Adults. I'm actually not sure which one they were. And Child Cassandra. Alexander does not exist, uh, poor guy. The second household was Mortimer's parents, Cornelia and Gunther Goth. They also show up in the third Sims game. I'm not gonna get too much into their lore unless it relates directly to the four Goth I'll be makeovering today because the family tree is gigantic and I don't feel like covering it all. Um, but they came in the Unleashed Sims DLC and they have two really weird looking cats. At least I think they're cats, I actually don't know. No matter where you look, whatever game you're playing in many renditions of the goth family including the first and most recent version the sims and the sims 4 their backyard has many graves of family members which as i said makes sense because their family tree is huge and it makes the tree has crumple bottoms and calientes in it and it's just really confusing to be honest there was a lack of lore related to the four who made it to the sims 4 in the original game but there was more going on with the older goth household. For example, the two ugly cats. Um, I love ugly cats, don't come for me. It, it's a compliment. So the Sims timeline jumps forward in The Sims 2. It is just like a continuation of the story, which I find really interesting. Uh, just for the type of game it is, it's a little hard to do that. But Cassandra is ready to start her own family and this family actually has four generations of goths. I don't actually know what generations those are because I can only count three and one of them is deceased so I don't really understand but I guess that's fine. We're getting into a little bit of a um, crazy territory here because The Sims 2 has a lot going on oh my goodness. Um, so Cassandra is engaged and her fiance in this game is Don Lothario. I'm sure this is common knowledge to most people but it's really strange and it surprised me. Definitely makes me question why they chose her to be a teen and him to be a doll romancing a MILF in The Sims 4. Uh, I know it's an alternate universe, but it's like still a bit strange. Alexander came into this game and the age gap between him and his sister was many more years than in The Sims 4. He, uh, a couple things are going on with the family, such as the Goths are the richest family in all of The Sims 2. Um, and I think that's because Gunther, Mortimer's dad, started rich and got richer over time, and then Mortimer inherited that wealth. Mortimer is an elder and nearing death in this game. His parents are dead and his wife has disappeared. One of the most iconic, I guess, pieces of sim lore is in this game, and Bella is gone. She disappeared and she was abducted by aliens, which just feels like they just threw out the most random thing possible, but I think it's great. Because she went missing, Mortimer started scoping out who he could date, Bella. <laughs> Cause on the family tree, she's still alive. Like you can tell she's still alive. She's just with aliens or something. So it's a little sad, but I get it, Morty, I get it. So Mortimer decided to date Dina Caliente, which is weird because obviously I know The Sims 4 better than any other game and this stuff just does not make sense. 
Um, but Dina is a gold digger. And this is the really messy part. So Cassandra is engaged to Don Lothario, as I said. Don is dating multiple women, including Dina, who is dating Mortimer. So basically, Cassandra is dating a man who is dating her father's girlfriend. It's really hard to explain. So, and then also, Alexander was introduced in this game. Not much is going on. Unproblematic Kang. Um, and interestingly enough, it's actually a canon event to have Don leave Cassandra at the altar, unless the Sim makes serious reparations in their relationship. So I suppose that's all I have to say about The Sims 2. Um, I can't say it enough how crazy the lore is in The Sims 2, but um, I'll be talking a bit more about uh, Bella's disappearance when we get to talking about her makeover. But we're gonna move on to The Sims 3, um, which I don't, I was debating if I should start with The Sims 3 because it is a prequel to all the other games, but I decided not to because it is The Sims 3. I'm actually already familiar with a decent amount of goth family lore in The Sims 3 because I watched some Sims 3 content which I really enjoy. Love the Lepisy Challenge. Uh, it, it feels like it's kind of a 3's not so very because of its notoriety. I don't know if that makes sense. But anyway, uh, The Sims 3 goth family consists of child Mortimer and his parents as adults. His mom has purple hair, it's gray. I think The Sims 3 leans into an like more goth aesthetic for the family because I think that Cornelia and Gunther really embrace that. I love their cemetery and the aura of gloom. And from what it looks like, Mortimer isn't really into it. He sticks with the general dark vibe, but he just seems to want to grow into a well-adjusted young man. Bella is in the game as well as a young version of herself with the name uh, Bella Bachelor because that is her maiden name. First, I thought there was no mention of Bella's family before uh, The Sims 3, but that is actually not true. Uh, Bella has a brother. His name is Michael Bla Bachelor because that is her maiden name, and he's a playable character in the first three games. His family is one of the three famous starter families in the original game, The Sims. And in The Sims 2, he is the late husband of Dina Caliente. Just complicates the whole family thing so much more. Uh, and he is obviously the older brother of the missing Bella Goth. Um, and it is also noted that Mortimer's maternal aunt is Agnes Crumplebottom. There's a lot of family relationships in this game and a lot of ties between households that I feel like Sims 4 kind of wiped it out, like all the complicated stuff, and it's kind of sad. So, the thing that I wanted to quickly like talk about is uh, the Goth family very well could have been inspired by the Adams family, uh, all the way down to the fact that the Sim 3 Goth home is almost an exact replica of the home from the Adams family values. Uh, which is really interesting and I definitely see the similarities but um yeah it, it kind of shows up in all games but specifically it's really interesting that the house is so similar uh but now it's time to talk about The Sims 4. Uh so Bella is back no one really knows why The Sims game chose to do this it's just said to be an alternate universe I don't like that idea at all to be honest but it kind of has to be that way because of the like weird inconsistencies and age differences it's, strange. Uh, it doesn't really make sense, especially with the Don, Dina, Mortimer, Cassandra thing, um, but I don't know. I do not like that it's completely separate from the old games, but anyway, the goth home is very personalized. No TV or stereo, no other electronics anywhere but in Cassandra's bedroom where she has like a tablet computer thing. And uh, I found a family tree of the goth Caliente and Crumple Bottoms and uh, also aliens. There were aliens on the tree. It is way more complex than I have the brains for. I'll put it up on the screen, but it's it's a lot. There's aliens in like multiple places on the tree, and it's interesting because it's like everything ties together except for The Sims 4. Yeah, that's about it for like general lore for the whole family. Uh, I know that the lore is more complex than that, but again, I cannot figure it out for the life of me. So I am gonna talk a little bit more about Bella now. Uh, I honestly wrote a bunch about her lore and then wrote nothing about the other the other three, but it's the only one who really has interesting lore. No offense to the others. So I'm just going to tell you a bunch about Bella and then say a little bit about the others. So yeah, let's get into Bella's makeover. Obviously, you've been watching it the whole time on the screen. I don't know if it has already passed by now even, but um... Bella is for sure the most iconic goth family member and maybe even one of the most iconic townies ever, uh, in my personal opinion. 
still, I was not aware that she's like a secret agent because there's like no connections there. Like there's no reason that she is one. Um, I, I did know that she is a secret agent because one of my first ones ever was her coworker, but I completely forgot about that. And I didn't realize that that was like not just a randomly generated job for her. She's got the typical gallery traits, good family oriented, romantic. Obviously she has the same, obviously she has some lore of her own as well. Uh, when she was a child, she and Mortimer were besties um, in the same spree. She didn't have many skills other than painting, which was low, but that's interesting. She always was the best dressed kid around, they say. Um, and when she grew up to marry Mortimer, she apparently really liked golf. It was unexpected because there's no golf in the game in The Sims 4, so I just never thought about it. But also, she doesn't really seem like the golfer type. But hey, that's cool, I guess. Um, but in The Sims 2, Bella was abducted by aliens, as we know. Interestingly, this is really weird. Uh, her last known location was on Don Lothario's deck. There's like a picture in that one of the houses that shows that. It's really strange because what was she doing on Don Lothario's deck? As I mentioned before, on the Sims family tree, Bella is not dead. Like, she's not a ghost. She is alive, um, but we don't know where she is in this game. But I do want to talk about the theories for a second about, like, the Don Lothario deck thing. While there isn't much going on with Don Lothario because he doesn't have any family, he doesn't really have, like, a crazy deal going on when it comes to backstory. He's connected with the Calientes, and the Calientes are connected to the goth family because of the Dina and Mortimer thing and also the it's just complicated but the Calientes are also to the goths for obvious reasons that I've stated from what I've gathered many people believe that Bella was abducted by a Caliente alien um because they, a lot of people think that like one of the three main Calientes the mom and the two girls uh are aliens um, or all of them. It being a member of the Caliente family, and there are more members of the Caliente family in, uh, like other games and stuff, so it could also be whatever them, um, but it would check out a little bit because of all the ties going on, and the Caliente family tree does have, um, a Polynesian technician, number seven to be specific, in the tree, so that's an alien, and that alien is related to the Calientes, uh, directly. Many people believe that Bella Goth, and there's also a version of Bella Goth that shows up in Strange Town, one of the EPs. Many people believe that the Bella Goth who showed up in that game is the Bella we all know and love with her mind wiped. Her personality is different in Strange Town, and she's shy and uninterested in fashion, uh, but a mind wipe can do that to you, I've heard. Another super strange detail from The Sims 2 is that when Alexander ages up and goes to university, a cinematic place, and Bella shows up in it as his, like, supportive mother, but she's still missing. So, I don't know if this is just, like, symbolism, or she just shows up for his graduation and then disappears again? I don't know. Or she just shows up to send him off to uni and just leaves again? I don't know. It's really interesting. Um, but that's about it for The Sims 2. Um, so when it comes to The Sims 4, Bella doesn't have a crazy deal going on when it comes to story, unfortunately. She has a couple skill points, and uh, she has the party animal aspiration, but that's about it. The Sims team's high school years post on Instagram and YouTube in the community tab confirmed that Bella and Mortimer were high school sweethearts, which checks out considering that their best, her best, which checks out considering her best friendship with Mortimer when they were younger in The Sims 3. So now I'm gonna talk about the others, and it's gonna be a really short conversation because. I'm burnt out of research, okay, and I think I've already said, like, a decent amount on the other three, so we'll stop after that. <laughs> so, Mortimer is a bookworm, he's outgoing in a creative sim, another kind of standard gallery trait uh, combination there. He is a freelance writer, which again, I did not know this at all. I had no idea that he was a writer. That's just really interesting. His makeover was... There's always a sim that, like, gets a makeover, and it's just like, they don't even look like they got a makeover because they look the exact same. Um, and that typically really only happens with male sims because ugh, I'm terrible at 
making them, but he looks the exact same as he did before, um, to be honest. But he looks a little bit better, and also I want to mention really quick, I am a little bit confused about Mortimer and Bella's ages related to each other, because I swear the old version of them were both adults. I could be wrong. I so I did not realize this, but Bella has always been a young adult and Mortimer is a adult, uh, which I find interesting because Bella, I just never knew that. I thought that maybe they aged her down in the most recent day, the one that gave her like the darker complexion and everything. Um, but no, she's always been younger, which does not make sense because as I said, they were high school sweethearts. Sims for high school years confirmed that. they are a whole like age group apart though so that doesn't make sense at all i'm really confused about it but um so now into cassandra i guess uh so cassandra is obviously a high school student she's creative and gloomy and she's into music wasn't aware of that i am realizing i wasn't aware of much at all in this game i wasn't sure about the hair i gave her but i do think it suits her um and honestly i'm just gonna talk about alexandra now i wish that i had a little bit more to say about the last three again but Alexander is a little nerd, and I say that lovingly. He's a bookworm and a whisk kid. I'm not sure how I like his adult version because, oh, I completely forgot to mention. So when it comes to Alexander, I actually made a version of him as a child, and I made a version of him as a young adult. I think I'm gonna start doing this when I do my tiny makeovers. If there's a child or a toddler or an infant or even an elder, in the game, I'm gonna make over their current version and then make over them as a young adult to see what they will or would have looked like as a young adult. Because I think that's really fun. You don't see makeovers of It's Aged Up too often. So I decided to do it uh, for this. Um, so yeah, I made over him twice. I am not sure how I like his adult version, but honestly, I just made it so that I could make other kids like Olivia Spencer Kim Lewis adult because I, I like Olivia Spencer Kim Lewis she's I really like that family so yeah <laughs> um and I'm actually like I know I did head cannons for my last video I talked a lot about my head cannons but that's because the BFF household just was kind of like lacking lore and I had opinions but in this game I don't know because if it's there's so much of it that I'm not familiar with because I did not play those games and I don't have much to speculate on because I just don't think it's my place. <laughs> I don't have a great deal of opinions on this family. I so I'm going to stop chatting your ears off. Uh, and yeah, I will see you guys next time. The next time I do tiny makeovers, which will be in about three-ish or cast videos. The next family I'm going to be doing are the pancakes. And after that, the Spencer Kim Lewis's. And then we are going to move on to Oasis Springs. So we are halfway through with... Um, half of the base game <laughs> so yeah i really hope you enjoyed this video let me know what you think about these makeovers because i don't know how to feel about them i feel like it's a little bit hard to do such an iconic family justice so i did my best but hey uh so thank you so much for watching i will see you guys later goodbye